The Troy Trojans returned to Veterans Memorial Stadium for a Saturday night matchup against Marshall, who is just two weeks removed from beating the eighth-ranked team in the nation. Um, two weeks ago tonight, I stood here before you disgruntled with how we played against Alabama and m in the first half. Uh, and two weeks ago tonight, Marshall beat Notre Dame. And uh, you fast forward two weeks, and um, I, I, you know we beat them. I don't think it, you know, I don't think it was really that close. The scoreboard, I, thought, I felt like. Um, we could, have, we could have pulled away in some areas that we didn't execute as well really early. Um, but but um, they're a good football team. They're physical. They're tough. They're big. I mean, they're, they're as big of a team as we'll play all year maybe. Troy got off to a great start with a 50-yard pass from Gunnar Watson to Marcus Rogers. However, the Trojans coughed up the ball later that possession on third and 11. The thundering herd would turn the ball over soon after a sack by T.J. Jackson, resulting in a fumble that was taken back for a scoop and score by defensive tackle Buda Jones. Big time play. That really, you know, that changed the momentum of the game early in the game because we got down, right? We don't, we turn the ball over, don't convert there. Uh, in the red zone, and then we score on defense. That's a, that's that's really making a statement and stopping the momentum they had and creating momentum for us. But really big play by him. The defense would continue to dominate the entire game for the Trojans, with one of the stars being linebacker Carlton Marshall, who on his third tackle of the game became the all-time tackles leader in Sun Belt Conference history. What can I say, man? I mean, he's he's a stud. He's a fighter. Um, I'll take him every every day and twice on Sunday. And I'm going to see if the NCAA will let me have a seventh, eighth, and ninth year with him. Led by Marshall, the defense would hold the thundering herd scoreless for the entire first half. On special teams, Brooks Buse made a field goal, putting Troy up 10 to zero near the end of the first quarter. Both offenses stalled in the second quarter, and Marshall lined up for a field goal with seconds left before halftime. But Caleb Bransaw blocked the kick, keeping Troy's lead going into the half. Out of halftime, the Thundering Herd found the end zone on offense after their defense came up with an interception. This also marked the only offensive touchdown of the game. The score was 10-7 going into the fourth, and once again, Brooks Buse would step up, scoring two field goals to win the game 16-7. Although the Trojans came out on top, the team has yet to put together a complete game according to Coach Summerall, who believes the best is yet to come. We're, we are very, very, very uh, far away from being the best we can be right now. We're not there yet. Um, we'll get there. Uh, I want us to get there immediately. I, I'd like for it to happen today, um, but um, we, we still have a lot of room for growth, a lot of improvement. You no, know, we don't like to pat, pat ourselves on the back. We know we have a lot, a long ways to go. And like Coach all said, we haven't made our, played our best ball yet. So uh, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Jacqueline Lambert, Troy, Trojan Vision News.